go. Welcome, everyone. We're going to make a bee soap tonight. <laughs> this is the little guy that I made, right? And we're going to do that together. Now, I have all of the materials that are needed here laid out for us. We'll have to come up one at a time and get what you need. But let's think for a minute about intention, right? So think about how you want to stylize your mood. Let's add, ask for a little inspiration. Minerva is the Roman goddess of all wisdom, crafting, intelligence, strategy. She's the bomb, right, Christy? <laughs> And in my opinion, she is not the god of war, goddess of war. No. <laughs> no. She no, is not. No, no, no. Minerva? Minerva is not Athena in my book. I, I go way back before that. But we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> we'll be talking about it in two weeks. In two weeks. I'm going to talk about it for two weeks. Okay. So. Let's ask for her inspiration now so that we can make our little visums purposeful and something that will really do us a, a good, good job, good purpose, okay? So close your eyes, take a deep breath. Let's, Minerva, great goddess of crafters, we come before you now to ask that you inspire us to make this tool, to make something that will be purposeful for us, something that will be useful, something that will bring us great joy. Guide our hands and our minds and be with us tonight. So motivating. So motivating. All right. So one at a time. Let's start on. Let's start with you. All right. She's going to come up here and put gloves on to be safe. Take a paper plate, right, and her little broom, and then pick out ribbons, beads, crystals. And then in that black bag on the end, there are pieces of paper that are wrapped around charms. And on the piece of paper is a fun fact about brooms. And the charm is your gift from the goddess to put on your broom. <laughs> so you go reach in there, no peeking, take something out, and then um, as you're working on your rooms, I'm going to ask you to read your fun fact and show us what the goddess gave you for your room and why you think that happened. Okay. It's just for fun. We'll see what happens. Hopefully everyone will get exactly what they need. No, just have a couple of links. You don't need much. Just have to wrap it around the room and tie a bow. So we'll talk about intention looking at my little room. First of all, we have a broom that is natural straw. Now, straw is a byproduct of um, harvesting wheat. Okay, but there's no gluten in it because there's no, no grain and no flour just the shaft of the, of the meat. But we can um, use that as the intention of abundance because wheat, the harvest, always meant good abundance for us. You know, so they eat turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, abundance in the field meant life, right? So everyone is starting out with the intention of abundance. So there, that's not too shabby, right from the get-go. Next. 
All right. So now after that, it becomes your creation. As you can see, who knows, who knows what my uh, idea was when I created this, what my general theme to this. <laughs> Can you tell? There's a Celtic trifecta for the goddess. And what are the colors that I use? Uh, black and red and black. And there's also I this and what's natural? Yeah. I use the natural for the um, for the maiden. And this sexy red lace for the mother. Yay. And this skinny black <laughs> ribbon for the crow. Now, when I picked those three colors, I, I held them together and I pictured those three entities becoming one. So in effect, I my theme for this little room is uh, total feminine energy. So have something in mind when you go up there or let the colors speak to you and then think about maybe what that means afterwards. You can do it either way. If there's something that's important to you, you can start with that theme. If not, you can just let inspiration carry you along, right? Of course, this charm is a triple goddess, goddesses uh, spiral. Right? So that would be perfect for it. And then I added the beads to incorporate the black, white, and red. The stars are just for fun and magic. And look, surprise, a purple, a purple stone on the top. <laughs> because sometimes you just need a purple stone. <laughs> All right? So that's my little idea of um, feminine energy in a piece. So start thinking about it and go up there, let it speak to you with what you need on your little plate. And don't forget your gift from the gods, the charm in the black bag. Okay. So Alba, why did you choose why did you choose that particular um, motivation for your beism? Why the feminine? What? Why feminine? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm very pro feminine energy. <laughs> I no, no, a no. Beesum for me. Uh, these are personal beesums. So what you will be using them for is cleansing your altar. And of course my altar is an altar to Minerva. So I wanted that feminine energy, you know, to add to it. Um, okay. Other ideas, you could use something more natural, like, uh, you know, the, the four elements or maybe the ocean or, you know, trees, whatever is uh, important to you, that's what your beast would be. Looking at the, the materials that I had and letting the inspiration flow as I was going, you know. Other intentions that you can add to your visa. Tonight is, is the new moon. So that is a, a very good for new beginnings, for creating something new. That's a perfect night for creating a new tool that you would use, you know. So uh, on the new moon, you're uh, you're also, you've got the, it's, it's the darkest time. And a besom is all about vanishing and cleansing. So it's a perfect time to make a besom. Um, and that really goes hand in hand with my idea of the, uh, of adding the crone in there too, you know? Mm -hmm. So you could do a besom to the crone by itself if you want. Or, you know, the sky's the limit. You're only limited by your own imagination and the materials you have on hand. And I tried to put a, a nice um, a nice collection together so they have some natural things and some um, and, and some ribbons of all different colors. There's even some uh, sparkle 
some glitter ribbon there. You want to add some fun. Um, so we have what the broom is made of. We have the colors. We have the symbolism. We have the time of the month. Um, it's Thor's day. So if you were, if you're a little be some, you know, wanted some uh, lightning or thunder energy, hey. This would be a perfect day to do it. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. <laughs> no, but I was hoping to see how you put it together. Okay. I'll show you on mine. You cut three lengths of ribbon and you tie it around the handle. And I tied it in the back first. Make a deliberate knot because you can put that intention into each time you tie the knot. So you're gonna tie it twice in the back, and you're gonna turn it around, tie it twice in the front, and then make a nice bow. And really that's all there is to it. The rest of it is stringing beads uh, on, the, um, on the ribbons that you have hanging. It's good to use these little skinny ribbons some, somewhere because they're handy to hang the beads on and to hang the charm on. Right? Oh, I thought you made the, the, the broom itself. You just started with a broom that was already made? Yes, yes, we're embellishing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're embellishing a broom that's already made. If you want Got to it. make a broom yourself, you'll have to get straw and sticks and soak them overnight, then um, sew them together and bind them and let them dry that way. Oh. You can get a little broom like this, you can um, enhance it by taking maybe straws from the cinnamon brooms that you get in the fall time, you can stick up in there and add to your room that way. You can use fresh herbs, you know, eucalyptus. And every time you're adding more intention to your little room. Let's talk a little bit about um, the use of a which is broom. Now, physically we use brooms to sweep away dirt and debris. Brooms to sweep away negativity and, um, cleanse our homes and our sacred spaces. Some traditions require that you have two separate rooms, one for cleaning the house and another for magical purposes. But in more old ways religions, particularly, I can speak to Strega or maybe uh, American folk uh, magic, um, you probably only had one room, <laughs> and, and you used it for everything. And really, when you're sweeping, um, you are also sweeping energetically. So it's really the same, same practice, right? So this room can be used to cleanse your space, and even a person or object of negative energy. I wrote uh, a little chant for removing negative energy. Here, I'll do birch. Sweep up high, sweep down low, chase away all signs of woe. I banish all that is profane, only blessings shall remain. So motivated. <laughs> you can do that to another person or you can do it to yourself. You feeling the funk? Sweep it away. <laughs> well, you know, when you go back to way before when when um, witchcraft was just your way of life, there you, go. you know, then you probably only had one room, probably only had one knife back then. It served all purposes and there was no difference between feeding your family physically and spiritually. There, there was 
it was there was no split there was no split i like that yeah. you know so you don't really need um extra fancy tools of different kinds you can use your everyday room for magical uses as well uh, uh to cleanse your home of negative energy take your witch's room and start at the back door sweep each room moving in a counterclockwise fashion from room to room then ending at the back door where you started sweep any debris out the back door or dump your dustpan out the back door to dump or sweep dirt out the front of your house can invite negative energy back so if that is the way you must do it sweep all the way off your property i didn't do that i wrote a chant for that one here here goes <laughs> Sweep and sweep round Wittershins. End the task where it begins. Out the back door, let it be. Sweep away negativity. So mote it be. <laughs> so who has a fun fact that they would like to uh, share with us? And um, show us what the goddess gave to them. Should I read it? That was a nice Okay, stand up. Okay. It says Whoever move a broom from one house to another, it will bring the bad luck and dirt of your last residence into your, your new home. I have a new home here. Uh huh. So you need a new broom. <laughs> yes, this doesn't pertain to decorative rooms or those reserved solely for magical use. Only those actually used to sweep through. E. For some reason, you must move an ordinary broom, put it into the new house through an open window, and the ill luck will be deterred. Well, I think I it is a rule. And what I think it is the moon because the moon is the perception with what I I need to know about myself, about the mysteries of this place, about the mysteries of you, all of you that are, I don't know, and the mystery of the place and that. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? I could share. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I know that in many cultures, uh, when you move out of a house, you are supposed to leave all the old brooms, mops, and dusters in the house, and you basically have a new house. You need new um, things to clean it with, because if you bring the old stuff, you might bring whatever that was in the old house in. Okay. Well, um, mine says... If your broomstick falls over, company is coming, or your the cat is using it as a scratching post. <laughs> and well, my sister died a few weeks ago, and I've been grieving her. And I asked my blessing to be something to like transmutate uh, grief into something else because I don't want to lose it because it's part of love. And um, the charm she gave me. Uh, is the Celtic knot, and this has um, on occasion been used as a sign to me of uh, love and transformation, and um, I think that's why it's here. Oh, wonderful. I was asked once if a vacuum cleaner could be used instead of a broom. <laughs> Well, after giving it some thought, I think the act of sweeping is important, but intention is the key. And you might have wall-to-wall -wall shag carpeting, I don't know. So, if you imagine the vacuum cleaner pulling all that unwanted debris, all that those substances and energies from the carpet, all the physical and metaphysical debris trapped in that receptacle, 
then take it outside and be rid of it. Blessed be. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next sharing their message from the goddess? Kimmy? Yeah. Come oh, share. It says, never sweep under someone's feet. It causes bad luck. If you do by accident, say, I will dance at your wedding to break the spell. All right. Remember that. Who's next with the message? Come, Lulu. Placing a basket by the door will act as your wand and protect you and your home from evil spirits. Make sure to place the bristles up and let the shaft hit the floor for optimum protection. Here, and what did your charm look like? Uh, it was a, a moon. A moon? Okay. Yeah. Is that good for you? I love moons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the goddess is batting about. <laughs> Jumping over a broomstick nine times will bring a suitable spouse within one year. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but this is perfect. Oh, the triple goddess. This song. is what I was going to bring to the cat tonight. No, it was already here for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's Minerva provides. <laughs> okay, so once outside your home. There are a few ways to deal with the negative energy. Sweeping it completely off your property is always recommended, but you could take a step that will help that energy transform into something more useful. If you have a fire pit, empty the dustpan there and send it off to be transformed by spirit when you next light your fire. Or pick a place in your yard to compost that energy. Turn the debris into the soil so the mother can transform it and the trees will help you do this. Remember your intention when you do that though. When you turn that debris into the soil or you, or you burn it in the fire, imagine that negativity leaving leaving and, and going to spirit to be transformed. Let the universe know that, that whatever's in that debris is no longer needed. Oops. Gotta be cleansed. Yes. Hi everybody. Some traditions say to sweep from west to east, then throw the dust out the back door. My charm Appears to be a thin crescent moon with a face surrounded by leaves. Ooh, I like this. Okay. So, mine says the straws of a broom are thought to have magical powers and are used in healing spells. Pick up a cinnamon broom in the fall and you'll have healing components for a year. And I have a little star. And I think this is because there are so many people in our immediate circle that are sick or have family members that are sick um, that I am speaking to on a daily basis um, and helping them through their situation, never mind um, my own family members who are having concerns. And I think this is very meaningful. Excellent. Does anybody want to speak to what colors they chose? Has anybody got a theme going? I didn't know that I was going to pick a seasonal wheel. Oh, oh. on a green cord. <laughs> so I will be putting some more beads on this that are like the, the basic, you know, color. North, south, east, west mm -hmm. colors to me. <laughs> Maybe black and white because you know. Mm -hmm. So, and this says, laying a broomstick across the threshold ensures only good visitors come by. <laughs> this can include visitors through the veil. Okay, that's us. 
uh, break the link by picking up the broom. Anyway, this is a new moon and it's springtime coming, so I'm going to do some like spring cleaning. Whatever element I need to, that needs, you know, in, in a space to clean it, I will have it present on my broom. Excellent. All right. So now that your home is clean and cleansed, the besom stands guard at the door to ensure the dirt stays gone. Place your besom bristle end up beside the door. You can also hang a decorative broom over the front door for good measure. It will sweep any negativity from those who pass through the door. The one over my door does a great job. We have never had a bad party. <laughs> That's true. Right. That's That's right. true. <laughs> the child's antique toy hobby horse is linked to a witch's broom. Now, I take this to oh. mean. <laughs> Did that you have any idea get or back here? You should have a car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I take this to mean that I love kids and love teaching. Oh, again, my friends, I kept it simple. I have a um, red velvet, very deep crimson hair ribbon that also has some details gold. And I found it in white cord all the way down. It has several significant meanings. Um, and I use the green ribbon from the from the charm to just add it there mm -hmm. and all, all pulled together that's a, a cotton string too so you've added strength and protection to it. so similar to how you cleanse your home with the witch's broom we often cleanse our sacred space before rituals the broom has the ability to cleanse not just a physical space, but also a mental and metaphysical space. When we physically sweep an area, we are also mentally sweeping the area. But in this instance, instead of touching the bristles to the floor, sweep slightly above it and move in a counterclockwise circular pattern. Then go around again in uh, middle space, about waist high, and a third time, sweeping just above your head. The circle is now thoroughly swept and ready to seal. It is customary to chant as you do so also. So Orifaxi has joined us. Aha! <laughs> this is my hobby horse, Orifaxi. Um, he's actually a uh, very powerful magical tool, uh, actor, and wonderful person who goes like this. <laughs> so that's great to have sound effects with your broom. <laughs> <laughs> See? Very nice. Oh, very nice. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Who hasn't uh, shared their Fun fact. Sao Ching Yang is a Chinese goddess of good weather. She is also known as the broom lady. She will sweep the clouds to where rain is needed and then away again so the sun can shine. My symbol is the triple swirl. Very oh, okay. So, if a broom falls from your hands while you sweep, make a wish before retrieving it. And a little broom with a star to make my wishes come. Nice. Very nice. Very good. You know, I didn't even look when I was attaching this. Uh, the goddess was guiding. <laughs> I just cut up the pieces of paper and just attached the. Oh. All right, who else has not There comes Amanda, and well, now we're going to find out what's going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what else going on with Amanda there? <laughs> Never sweep after the sunset for fear of chasing away happiness or hurting a wandering soul. Oh, oh Celtic Notch. Celtic Notch, you got. Legend has it 
that um, witches ride broomsticks, what they would do is they would coat their broomsticks in hallucinogenic oils, usually made from belladonna and wolfsbane. And so when they rode their brooms, they got the feeling of flying. So they would jump and they would jump around and fly. So that was part of the, the Sabbath celebration, the ecstasy. Okay? And you know what, how it feels to ride a hobby horse. <laughs> I found the entire poem of a piece that we always use to uh, when we sweep circles. When there's a, like a little rhyme that we always use pretty much a lot of often times. I found the whole poem. So we're going to use that poem to bless our brooms when everybody's uh, done. Okay. Here's a fun fact. A delicious salad treat can be made by sticking a pretzel stick into a mini Reese's peanut butter cup. Facial witch's broom. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's cute. That's fun fact. The witch's broomstick would be anointed with hallucinogenic oils, so the one riding it would get the feeling of flying. We still do. Oh, so, Christine still does that. No. <laughs> you, you might want to look at Amethyst. She's showing her broom. Oh. Amethyst is showing her broom. Stuff from my garden. Okay. Basically palm leaves and and I think uh, Aurelia branch and I was going to make a wand out of this piece, but I decided it would make a better broom handle. And so I have and I, I like palm trees for my for my bristles. Uh, palm fronds rather. So that's what I have. And then I, I decorate it. It's, it's bound with twine and, and charms and hair <laughs> to make it mine. The besom is usually thought of as masculine due to the shape, but its traditional components are both masculine and ash stave and feminine birch twigs. Wow. Traditional, <laughs> the traditional besom <laughs> is ash and birch. Two of my very favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> Lay a broom under the bed for protection from nightmares. Jumping over a broomstick can be used as a symbolic gesture during half fastings to signify taking the leap so that's all my fun facts about brooms. Does anybody else have any fun facts about brooms? Anything I missed? What do you use your broom for? So, you want to come up and show, show your broom? broom yes, or, come tell us about your broom. Products. My broom. My broom is like my life at this moment. Fancy. Yes. Wow. It has green. <laughs> Everything is brilliant. Green for healing, red for strength that I need to go on my path, and full of different beads, full of colors, full of friends, new friends, a new place, everything new and well. So much. So Come on, describe your broom. Give me share your broom. Okay, mine has lots of stars as a kind of went with the, ironically, it went with the theme of the term that's on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it represents the fact that for me, since I just turned 30 yesterday, a new yeah. decade and just a bunch of new things happening. And my, since my birthday was yesterday, which was the start of the new moon, which it just kind of symbolized that the stars are usually with people use to represent things that are new or things that are big, you know, when they think of like the Big Bang Theory and things like that, where everything's just new and bright and colorful. And so this was just me just trying to show that 
this will be a new year, a new decade, and a much better one than the last Mine's still in process. Oh, thank, thank you. Oh, you as you can see, it's 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 sparkly. <laughs> I see. Fairy like even. And um, it has all of the colors of the elements: yellow, red, blue, and green, and black and white, which are all and nothing. And uh, one side is more the masculine indicated colors and a little little bit of, oh, I lost the bead. Put some beads in the actual thing in a triangle. Nice. And then on the back, the, uh, the feminine side is more like a circle. So, and then I've got this beautiful little, um, it's very elemental in nature, it's all of the seasons. So it's spring, summer, winter, and fall. So this is to spring clean. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine right here. So as presentation earlier suggested, it's that traditional masculine elements. However, I viewed this one as the combination of God and goddess, Lord and Lady, and how the masculine is intertwined with his consort forever with uh, the royal silver mistress of the moon goddess of heaven and he's the lord of animals so they are they are embracing each other and i even put a moon pseudo moon on the top so when the light hits at the right time it can shine just so it can sweep sweep all right that's me all right, all right. thank you this is a triple goddess. Everything on her represents her magic, the blood, the bone, and the magic of the moon. And she loves it. She's gonna get your son. So um, mine um, on the front side, I have three ribbons in yellows and greens, very birch appropriate colors. <laughs> in my uh, tot totemic tree. Um, and then, as I was mentioning earlier, the theme of transmutation, um, silver and gold beads. Those were obviously, gold was the goal of all transmutation and alchemy. And um, a bit of a David Bowie reference on the back, Black Star, his song about death, I've been listening to a lot lately to try and get over uh, my feelings about losing my cat. And so I have a little bit on there, what's behind you, I'm also in front. So I've done mine in green, um, a white gold, silver, and a black with um, gold and silver on the front represent the earth. And also I have the um, Celtic knot in the middle and the two stones represent love and passion. Nice. <laughs> All right, everybody, rooms up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of a repeat after me. Look at that one. That's beautiful. Oh, nice. Damn. All right. Wow. Get it. Okay. Be some, be some long and live. Be some, be some, be some long, long and live. live. From ash and willow wise. Made from ash and willow wise. Tied with thongs of willow bark. Tied with thongs of willow bark. In running stream at moonset dark. In running stream at moonset dark. With pentagram indicted. With pentagram indicted. As the ritual fire is lighted. As the ritual fire is lighted, sweep ye circle docile. Sweep ye circle docile. Sweep out evil, sweep out ill. Sweep out evil, sweep out ill. Make the round of the ground. Make the round of the ground. Where we do the lady's will. 
where we do the ladies' will. Now here's a familiar part. Be some, be some, ladies' brew. Be some, be some, ladies' brew. Sweep out darkness, sweep out doom. Sweep out darkness, sweep out doom. Rid ye ladies hollowed ground. Rid ye ladies hollowed ground. Of demons, imps, and hell's red hound. Of demons, imps, and hell's red hound. Then set ye down on her green earth. Then set ye down on her green earth. By running stream or mistress hurt. By running stream or mistress hurt. Till called once more on Sabbath night. Till called once more on Sabbath night. To cleanse once more the dancing sight. To cleanse once more the dancing sight. So mode it be. So mode it be. Thank you, everyone. Stay proud. Oh, she's Catholic. <laughs>